So this is the final result, what they look like after they finish. So this finish really depends on um, what kind of leather you're using and which layer you're using. So the denser leather, it's better for this finish. So if I explain in details, uh, this leather is just a one piece of leather, uh, vegetable tan leather, black one. It finishes like this. And this is two um, same leather, but it has a different thickness. And this top one doesn't have much of a loose layer, so it shows you a much more dense result. And on the bottom, it's the same leather, but it has more of a fibrous um, structure. And it shows more of a fudge finish. So this finish works really well with a dense leather, such as Cordoban or other type of leather. So uh, if you're trying to look for um, what kind of finish are you trying to use, try to use it on dense leather so that it gives you a smooth and nice finish like this. So for dye and wax finish, there are some material that you need. Um, some canvas cloths or if you have a denim, you can use the inside part of the denim which has no indigo. Or you can use any um, cotton cloths, but not soft ones. Uh, just a thick fabric also will do. Uh, edge slicker and fine edge bevelum and your dye of course uh, this one is Morello extra spots uh, this is just a black dye used in the shoe industry uh, they finish the um, shoe sole edge with this uh, specific product they do have um, just a uh, normal just schwarz on it but this is extra schwarz which means uh, extra black so uh, I'll just use demonstrate with the Morello one uh, you can use different uh, brands of, of uh, dye as well. You can use oil dye or you can use different um, dyes. This is alcohol based dye which dries much faster and it doesn't, um, it doesn't leave on another any residue. It, just, uh, it dries quite fast and it doesn't really leave any, um, any, anything on leather. So I, I prefer this type but you can try other type of brand and if it works, it works. It just needs only coloring for your edge and that's it. So, and uh, it, yeah, a lot of um, brands out there for dyes. I I tried to go um, explain some some of the dyes also, but um, dye is quite tricky. It depends on what kind of dye you're using. So I cannot really go every detail of every brand. But um, I do have my preference uh, in some in some um, dyes. And uh, in the future, I will, I will make a video about dyes. Uh, there are also ones I used to use when I was in Asia. I used to use a called Spiran uh, from Japan. Spiran is also alcohol based dye. Uh, Spiran is also a great product. So if you're in Asia, um, try Spiran as well. But uh, Spiran is tr quite hard to get in, uh, even in Asia. I think South Korea Spiran is really hard to get. It's quite available in Japan. So Spiran is something that I will I'll try to review uh, later in the future. Yeah, so, anyways dye you need and you need this wax. Uh, this is not a beeswax. Uh, I will show you again the ratio of this. So this wax is can be used for your uh, linen threads. Um, I think a lot of people use only 100% beeswax for their li uh, linen. You can also do that and then you finish with the um, paraffin wax later but then it's much easier process then you mix two waxes together and you melt it into one and uh, so that you have a um, already sold solid piece of uh, wax that's already for your um, threads and also this wax um, ratio is also good for your edge finishing uh, I used a ratio between uh, beeswax 90% and paraffin wax 10% so this was measured by the weight so for say this is 90 gram beeswax and 10 gram paraffin wax and of course you're trying to make it bigger that will make 180 gram and 20 gram for your wax block it doesn't have to be pharmaceutically correct. Uh, you can use less or more of each wax. You can use 85% or 15% also. Uh, it just depends on uh, your preference. I tried in, in many different ratio as well, but then I found that this range uh, works quite well for this type of application. So uh, you can experiment on your own and you can create your own ratio wax as well. So it's no, um, totally fine. Uh, the thing why we should use this mixture of uh, beeswax and the paraffin wax is that if you use only beeswax for your edge, it becomes very sticky, or other words, you can call it also tacky. So uh, your edge needs to be very smooth and really doesn't doesn't have to, uh, cannot, it shouldn't attract any dirt from your pocket or outside or 
uh, on your work table. Uh, so it should be just um, it should be wax, and also it should be slick enough to really doesn't attract any dirt. And that's what paraffin does. So 100% beeswax will attract dirt, but using paraffin wax, it will leave very smooth finish. It doesn't leave any sticky uh, residue. Paraffin wax is a petroleum-based product, and beeswax is a natural product. So uh, you get the the benefits of um, the stick, the really hard substance, and also the thick substance um, from this uh, beeswax ratio. Yeah. So this is the uh, ratio of the wax. And I will have to talk about this uh, leather structure uh, for this um, finish because it's quite important for this subject matter. So I know it's quite boring, but uh, I have to explain you uh, about this thing. Otherwise, you will not understand what, what I mean. So yeah, so here's the leather structure. Uh, you might have seen this already from somewhere. Uh, I got this from uh, Casello Davac. So if you're watching Casello Davac, thank you so much for this really nice um, diagram for leather. Uh, this is really um, nice drawing for um, explaining stuff. So uh, I got it from uh, Casello Davac, uh, Texas, USA. So this is the person uh, that I got, the website that I got this um, leather structure from. So basically, if you buy leather, uh, there's a leather piece of right here. So if you buy leather, there's good side yeah, and there's a fuzzy side on the back right so this is vegetable tan leather and also even if you buy chrome leather it's the same so if you have a um, grain structure like this uh, this is uh, leather yeah so uh, it's all fibrous just mingled up together and it's just a fibrous material yeah but it has a different grain side to it so uh, this side, which is the the outside of the leather, the good side, this is the most durable side, and it has very uh, the density, dense um, gra grain on this side, and on the bottom, the fuzzy side, it has a loose loose grain. Yeah? It's a it's quite loose fiber, so uh, the leather gets less dense towards the split side to the bottom side. Yeah, so uh, the all your rigidity and your strong good leather comes from top. And a lot of makers try to um, grind on the top side so that they can uh, reveal the smooth s side. But then if you have a really nice leather, they don't do that and they still have a lot of thick portion of the good grain side. Yeah, So it's called top grain. And this split side and the, the top grain side, they have a um, transition structure called um, corium interface. And this is the just, a, I don't know, you can, you can even see it from your eyes that um, there is some kind of middle structure there and you see sometimes it turns out to be a white layer of uh, in your chrome tan leather also as well that's a um, corium interface yeah so for this wax finish like I said in the very beginning of the video uh, you need a lot of grains okay if you have a loose side uh, on your edge exposed or however uh, this fuzzy one will get uh, very fuzzy even though you finish with the wax uh, you can finish it again, 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 and you can um, smooth it down, and eventually you will get it very smooth. But it will take a lot of time if you want to do that uh, by by this method. So uh, if you are using very thick leather, and especially you're using a lot of loose fibers, such as uh, for example this one. Yeah, if I show you like this, so you will see a lot of fuzzy side in the middle. This is two leather glued uh, to one piece. And you will see a lot of fuzzy side inside this um, core of the leather, and this will reflect um, very coarse as finish from this wax finish. Yeah. So in order to do that, you need to use a lot of dense fiber uh, on like this side, glued up together, like this. This is very thin leather, uh, glued up together. Also vegetable tan leather, but then now you have removed this um, very fuzzy side because you split it in very thin. So now you have a um, very good top grain side on both, so it's much denser than, and than this structure. Okay, so uh, this will get a lot of smooth finish than this one. Yeah. So I'll show you how. So first I'll demonstrate with black leather, which is the easiest one. And you need some kind of uh, backing paper, you can use any um, phone book or any other pamphlets or advertisement paper behind your uh, 
letter so that when you dye letter if you even you drip drop some of the droplets of uh, dyes your work there will be saved so I'll use glove for this uh, because I don't want to dye my hand so this is just a any type of like latex glove glove you can find it anywhere and I'll apply with the dauba that I always use and yeah so one thing I have to talk about dyes when you dye your leather with oil dye or any other dye if you try to uh, dye your leather like with oil dyes and if you try to oil your leather with like nice food oil or any other type of oils be careful because that oil that you have applied to nutrition and uh, neutralize uh, to make it smooth or give a lot of oil effect will draw the oil dyes into the leather so you will actually get really look funky later on or uh, your dye will be transferred to your clothes or stuff that oil get get into so oil really attracts the dyes and they move around together with it so if you dye your leather oilings oiling is really need to be carefully done yeah so if you dye your edge just um, stay away from your dye uh, as much as possible yeah so this is just a one piece of vegetable tan leather uh, quite thick this is about 2.2 uh, millimeter thick just one piece of leather and it's a black and I just cut it straight with a with a knife so I didn't do any edge beveling so now I apply dye once okay and just twice just to make sure yeah or if you feel like it you can also apply it third times three times and then now uh, your dye will soak into the leather so I will just leave it like leave it like here for about 10 seconds and then I'll come back So after a few um, seconds, about 30 seconds later, your dye will be already um, enough dry to work on. So now then you need to bevel your edge so that you have only the um, clean side on your edge. So just try to take off a little bit. Yeah. This, this has a very fibrous side, okay. So, now, uh, I'm using this electronic um, mini iron that I did review a while ago. I'll put the link in the description about this iron. You can get different version in US and it's quite nice and it's handy. Uh, I'll set it into volume 2 setting, which is the high setting. And I'll try to melt the wax um, by touching the tip like this. Uh, you may use, apply the wax directly onto the edge like this and then you melt it with the iron you could do that but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid any um, damage to the leather what I mean is that if you touch your leather uh, too much your leather kinda becomes used item after you complete the stuff so to in order to get a very fresh look uh, for your leather item um, don't touch your leather too much so avoid any contacts uh, if possible so this case I'm also trying to avoid any um, physical contacts uh, to the edge and also the surface of the leather so I'm just trying to uh, melt it with the heat the wax and then I'm just going to apply the melted wax onto the edge so that it works on better okay but of course certain case if you need to um, apply the solid wax first and then you can melt it of course okay so do not apply too thick just apply very thin. I say about two or three times layer will be nice enough. Yeah, we don't want to be wax to be like too thick build up to the edge. Okay, so just enough to melt in the wax into the edge. Okay, so now what you should do is get your silica and try to rub it in like this okay just slick your edge just like you would slick your edge okay like tokono you're using tokono okay so
Yeah. So now you have a smoother finish with your uh, wax. You just pack it down with your edge slicker. And what you need to do is using this cloth, um, canvas cloth, you need to buff it. Uh, you are not trying to polish this uh, by any means. You are, you are not polishing anything. What you're doing is you're trying to remove any uh, residue of dyes and waxes. Uh, right now, the state is that wax is blended with the dyes. So if you just use it like this, you will get some residue uh, left on your clothes or hands. So you just remove the only the excess of it. So don't be so aggressive to it. Just lightly buff it, okay? Just to remove any residue. So. Try to go on the top layer and also the edge layer, like this, so that you, you're trying to feel it uh, as if you try to uh, remove any residue. So you're just cleaning basically, yeah? So cleaning the edge. Yeah. And also, oops. And now, you just edge sticking away. So that's it. So this is how it's done. So like I said, if you have a dense fiber, you will not um, get the very shine look to it. So this is what it looks like with the fairly loose fiber, normal leather. I will demonstrate how it looks like with dense leather. So this is another type of vegetable tan leather, but it has a very thick grain side because it's a higher quality, so it's quite dense. Yeah, so uh, it's a it's a vegetable tan color, so uh, it will show a lot better, more. So it's quite trickier to finish like this, but I will demonstrate uh, in front of the camera so that what it looks like, how you finish, how would you finish with a uh, this type of bright color vegetable tan leather. So it's the same principle, is the same. Uh, your dauber, you shouldn't have too much dyes, of course. Then it will bleed too much when you apply this. So. Uh, you will have just enough that so that it doesn't drip. So right now it doesn't drip. It has just the uh, dyes into the sponge. So right now you're just trying to apply very um, lightly. Okay, like like this. Okay, and like this. And then there's a missing spot. So you go once again. So you will have dyes a little bit on your on your edge, but then don't worry because you're going to remove this with your edge beveler. So um, that's why we edge bevel uh, later and not before the we apply dye. So I will do the edge beveling now. So it's good about um, alcohol based dye; they dry very fast. So I prefer alcohol based dye. Okay. So remove this side. Okay. So now you have a clean, clean edge. Okay. So again, heat up to the second setting, the high heat, and then melt your wax, and then just work it it here. Yeah, work it in. You are um, not building thick layer of wax. You're just melting in. Okay, you're melting in the wax layer. So do it two or three times. Don't do it too much. Okay, so I turned it off and then when it's cooled down a little bit, yeah, you slick your edge. This this is you're doing it by packing down the the wax layer so that it gets denser. 
the melted wax will get polished. Now we clean with uh, the cloth, just pop it. Okay, and we do the slickering again. And this will be the end of it. It's it's quite simple but also multiple step and it's really picky in uh, what kind of leather you're using so uh, you may get great results and you may not get the results and it also all depends on, uh, on your leather so uh, try in different application different leather that you have and you might get great results yeah, if you practice enough so yeah so this is the finished edge so this is very nice glossy dense finish whereas the one that I just did in the earlier video, it doesn't give you that much of a clean look, but still it's edge wax finish. Yeah. So uh, it really depends on what kind of leather you're using. So this is how you're done, uh, this is how you dye and wax finish your edge. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I have much more um, tool review videos and how-to videos in the future, and if you hit the bell button, you will get the notification and uh, yeah you will get you will know um, if I upload new video so you will get the notification yeah so thanks for watching guys as always I'll see you guys next video bye bye